So I'm taking a slightly different approach to my normal video technique here because I need some space. So I've come into my dining room to give myself some more elbow room. This is a Dinky 351 UFO interceptor. And as you can see, it's got um, the shadow stickers on it. It's a really nice example of an original UFO interceptor. What you often find these days on eBay is that um, they get repainted white. And you can see that on the box, it's painted white. And the reason for that is that in the TV series by Jerry Anderson called UFO, um, the interceptors were indeed white. Um, for some reason, Dinky went with green. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but what you're looking at here is an original interceptor, but this box, which I didn't realize when I initially picked it up, but I realized shortly thereafter, is actually a reproduction box. It's a very nice reproduction box though, because I have had a look online. And this box is basically identical to the very first iteration of the box that um, the interceptor came in. So that was a sort of normal cardboard box with that inlay with a sort of a scene on it, so you could sit the interceptor on that scene, and also a reproduction of um, an A4 sheet with a dinky advert and sort of various dinky instructions on the back there for, for how to use the interceptor. Now, you can see here, it was originally intended that you'd have a cap in between the um, interceptor missile, which is often missing, and the firing mechanism on the insides to so basically to create a bang when the... Uh, the missile was launched but the missile doesn't need a cap to launch that i think was just for special effects purposes um so what i'm going to try and do and the reason why i've uh, filmed in here is show you just how far these things will fire because it's pretty crazy um and i've, I've shown on other videos some of the um the zygon ships that came out well after the ufo interceptor um, also had pretty lethal firing mechanisms, and this one was also, you know, clearly one of the precursors to that. So let me just try and um, show you this slightly one-handed. So it's 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 all it's mainly diecast. You can see it's got all the um, original sort of landing feet are there and in very good condition, and also the the rear thrusters there at the back. The thing that I like about this, I don't think I really appreciated it at the time when I, when I had the opportunity to have one, is that it has no wings. And that's absolutely fine, because it's a spaceship. It's based on the moon. It does not go down to Earth. It does not need wings. Even this little tail fin is pretty superfluous to requirements, really. Um, I think as a kid, that might have irked me. And, and yet, for some reason, I was completely accepting of the eagle from Space 1999 not having wings. So I'm not quite sure what my logic was there, but maybe I hadn't watched UFO as much, so I thought that UFO was kind of on Earth more, um, because there was another Interceptor craft that was um, part of the submarine that they used that did fly in space. I think it was called Sky One, actually. Um, and, you know, I may have got the two muddled up in my head, I don't know. Because UFO was pretty scary if you were a kid as well. That was quite, quite, quite dark. Live action and quite dark. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is get this ready. So I believe you have, I need to pull this all the way back so it clicks. So that's the sort of spring mechanism there. And I had to ask Blue Harvest this because I was confused because I thought I couldn't figure out how to fire it. There's actually a a little silver stud here and that's the, the 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 trigger that fires the actual missile so i'm going to try and fire this towards my door over there and we'll see just how lethal it is ready steady whoops it would help if i didn't completely block the mechanism with my other finger difficult to do one-handed as it turns out let's try again yeah that's pretty lethal I've got a dent in my door now. So that hit the door and bounced all the way back to by my feet. So that's quite impressive. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can imagine they would never get, get away with that these days. And that's, that is the, the interceptor that you normally see. 
um, because obviously those missiles are very, very frequently lost. Um, they came in a few different colour versions. There was a, a black and yellow, um, I can't actually remember what the other one was, but there is another variant. But there was Allegedly there's a white and red variant, but apparently that's just a myth. Um, so if you see a white and red nosed one, then that's probably someone's um, reproduction one. But obviously that's, you know, that's not unreasonable because people will need them. But I say that, you know, the vast majority of them that I've seen on eBay have actually been rather nicely repainted white um, to resemble the show one. And yet that, that particular version of it never got an official release, ironically. Um, so I paid quite a lot for this, relatively speaking, because of the box. And... As I said, I didn't really realise until I got the box out to feel it because it's quite a it's quite a shiny, smooth box, and that was the dead should have been a dead giveaway. The other versions of the box were um, a sort of blister pack where you would have the UFO sort of sat on top of the base, but with with um, you know a, a clear plastic um, sort of hood over the top of it, and then finally they released it in um, a sort of um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like sort of for a toy stand, you know, where you could sort of put them onto onto shelves, basically, or or, or sort of um, just hang them. So that was a slightly different type of, of box and a more modern box, and that was the last version it came out in. But if you've seen my um, Dinky catalog videos, you'll know that they really they produced this for a long, long time. Um, I can't quite remember which which Dinky catalog first had it in, but it was early. And it just kept going for years and years and years. So it's you know these are relatively easy to find, although in very very varying states of repair a lot of the time. So this one, what really drew my eye to it is that it's in a very very nice condition and it seems to have all its bits. There's even um there's even a pilot in the cockpit. I don't know if you'll be able to see him, and he comes in a couple of different colours as well, and so does the canopy. But you can see the you know the attention to detail is definitely there. There's no, there's no two ways about it. So it's a really impressive model. This is a, you know, it's a very strongly painted one. You can see here it has all the normal sort of dinky information. UFO interceptor, dinky toys made in England. And as he got his number on it, so 351 is on it. So, um, yeah, so I mean, that was an, that was, that was, I entirely blame um, Blue Harvest for that because he sort of, he, he mentioned to me that he had such a beast in his cabinet at the time. So I, I decided that it would be rude not to, and um, popped along to have a look and picked it up. So um, I'm going to retrieve the missile before I forget that it's lying on the floor, just in case the dog eats it. And um, I, I might try a little, little bit of Lego building tonight as well, because um, I haven't done it for a long, long time. But I've also got um, a couple of other things to, uh, to show you in, in due course as well, so I'll probably look at those during the course of this week. Cheers for now.